Shalom, brothers and sisters. I just want to share a truth with you for this, for a moment. I'm reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. A lot of us in our walk with the Most High, with the Spirit, a lot of times you got people that everything is celebratory to them. Everything. But the truth of the matter is, Yeshua say, the servant shall not be greater than his master. He was despised and rejected of men. Many of us, we're going through those trials. Those trials that if the servant isn't greater than the master, then the servant is experiencing exactly what the master experienced. Many times, because the spirit of the Lord rests upon you, you will find that there are people who despise you. Not because of some evil you spoke to them, not because of some past evil that you did, but because that spirit is upon you. They despise you. They attack you. They speak all manner of evil against you because you are one of his children. You go through it at work. You go through it with family. As a matter of fact, one of the things that I'm experiencing or have experienced, a servant is not greater than his master. No, he's not. No, he's not. Not greater than your master. A prophet shall be respected everywhere except amongst his family and in his own hometown. Family doesn't always have to be the people in your house. Family can be your aunts and uncles, your cousins, your siblings. It makes me think of the story of Joseph. God gave Joseph dreams and revelations and when he spoke of them, his siblings despised him. To the point they wanted to take his life from him. But God touched him enough the way they sold him off to slavery. When you think about Joseph, 17 years, 17 years he was separated from them. And keeping it real, the heartache, the heartache of knowing your family did this to you. It wasn't by the hand of some unknown enemy or some person outside your family. This came from his brothers, his brothers that should have had his back, his brothers that should have loved him. Many of us are going through that. Many of us, because the spirit of God rests upon you, the attitude is, why would God pick you? We don't get an opportunity to decide who God picks. And what a lot of people don't recognize is where people think it's esteem, it's some great position. Got to go back to what I said earlier. He was despised among men, rejected. A man of sorrows. Somebody who was very familiar with grief. And one of the things that we understand as we go through this walk, there are sorrows. Sorrows because he who increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. Why is that? Because when the spirit of truth comes upon you and opens your eyes, a lot of times you find out that those people that you ran with, those people that are in your family bloodline, brothers and sisters, the jealousy, the anger, that they show is shocking. I'm sure it was shocking to Joseph. Many of you are going through it right now. A man of sorrow. Everything we do is not esteemed. Everything we do when people see us. A lot of times what they're doing is projecting their own jealousies onto us their own shortcomings and instead of getting close to God, instead of recognizing that whatever's being done is being done because God made this decision. They look at the person, they look at the person. They determine if you are younger than them or if you 
don't look as good as them or if you look better than them, why would God choose you? They determine because you're a female or you're a male. If you got more money, if you got less money, why would God choose you? But the thing about it is God doesn't go and check with a person about who he chooses. They also don't recognize that the servant isn't greater than his master. And many times, just like the word tells us, any tree that bears fruit, God will purge that tree that it brings forth more fruit. He'll purge it. What is purging? To prune it. When he prunes that tree, we're trees. So what is being purged? What is that pruning? Prune away old attitudes. Prune away people, relationships. Many times, you can. I'm a gardener. You can think about going out into a garden where your flowers have bloomed and it's spectacular. And then as those flowers grow old and the petals fall away, in order to keep the, the, the bush healthy, the tree healthy, you have to prune away old dead branches, the fruit that's rotten and falling away or is grown old and is no more good. It's draining that tree, it's draining that bush. And you prune it. You prune it because then it brings forth more fruit, more blooms. Where those trees, where those bushes? Here's the thing, though. The pruning doesn't always feel good. Many of us, we speak the word to each other, but we don't talk about some of the pain and the suffering you can go through. Because there is pain and suffering. The servant isn't greater than the master. He was a man of sorrow. He knew grief, rejected of men. What does that mean? That certain people in your family, at your job, some people attack and you don't even know why they're attacking. Because that spirit of the most high rests upon you. And they can see it. They'll attack verbally. I've had family members, you talk all that, Yeshua and Jesus, you don't even know the Lord. I, I've had stuff going on It's just shocking. Like, my God, what in the world has gotten a hold of some of these people? People that I love. Many times you find out people you love don't love you. They're jealous, they're envious, they're hateful. And no matter how hard you try to live at peace with them, they want war. They want war because when they look at you, it's why would God touch you? I didn't go out and pick anything. You didn't go out and decide anything. God chooses to open whose eyes he will. And when he opens the eyes of the blind, and I'm talking about us, sometimes you've been blind to the spirit of the person you're around and you need to see. That person has to be pruned out of your life. Pruning is not always some easy experience. It can be rather painful, but it's not doing you any good anymore. And a lot of times you don't know when that master gardener is going to prune those people, those situations away from you. But in order for us to grow, in order for us to bring forth more fruit, we end up growing in ways, situations that we had no understanding of until the spirit reveals it to us. The servant is not greater than his master. He is not greater than his master. You had people who considered themselves, they were scribes. What is a scribe? That's somebody who writes down the laws, the word of God. Back then, writing legal documents, who could get married, who could get divorced, but they, they transcribed, they wrote over, they made copies of the books of the Most High. And because they knew the word, they wrote the word, they assumed they were above a lot of people. That had nothing to do with the spirit being upon them. That's why Jesus and the scribes went back and forth. The lawyers, the Pharisees. You got people that know the word. But when you look for the spirit, it's a whole nother situation. There's nothing wrong with you. You're being pruned. And a lot of people in your life that have been, may have been in your life for years, family members, the more God touches you, you start noticing they hate you. They act hateful. I've literally had family members go out 
say all manner of evil lie against me to where I walk up on people in his situations I'm supposed to have done that I didn't do. I had one family member just come to me and tell me that they realized this individual had been lying on me for quite some time. About God. Brothers and sisters, the servant is not greater than the master. He's not. And a lot of the things that Yeshua went through, even to the point of death, remember he was on the cross. This is a man who spoke life, who told truth. And on the cross, when he said, I thirst, they gave him gall, vinegar to drink. Knowing this was a righteous man. On one side of him, he had one man that was still mocking him. The other man said, wait a minute, we know that what we are here for, we did these crimes. This is an innocent man. He asked him to remember him when he came into his kingdom. You got people that knowing, knowing you're innocent will still try to hold you guilty, will still attack because that spirit of God is on you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against wicked spiritual forces in high places. That pruning, that pruning. And just like Yeshua was on that cross, many of us are on the cross. Yes, we are. We got to die to ourselves, die to old attitudes, old thoughts, old ways. A lot of people that used to be around us. When you find out they're in opposition, continual opposition, and you being you, just a child of the Most High, that they'll reject you if you don't conform to their way, not God's way, their way, that they're going to oppose you. There's that pruning. There's that pruning. He was a man despised, rejected of men. He knew sorrows. He was acquainted with sorrows. Many of us right now are going through being acquainted with sorrow, recognizing that a lot of people rise up against us, not because of something evil that you did, but because you truly believe in the Most High God. You believe in His Word. And because you speak the Word, they're used to hearing lies. When you speak the truth, not some attacking truth against them, when they recognize you have knowledge of the most high, they will hate you. Because you had a dream, you had a vision, and they despise you. It made me think of Joseph. Here comes that dreamer. Here comes that dreamer. These were members of his own household. And many of us, members of our own household, our brothers, our sisters, turn on us. And if we don't surrender what the most high has put upon us, they hate us. But what did the word say? If you love brother, sister, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter more than me, you are not worthy of me. We need to encourage one another, brothers and sisters, because everything is not all oh, happy day. Everything is not all sweetness and light. But I found something out as I go through this purging. I found something out. My father said, draw nigh unto me, draw nigh. I watched my own siblings attack me. Not because of any other reason than I'm sitting at home reading my Bible. One brother comes over, I want that Bible. Give me that, I want that. Well, my brother, you can buy your own. I can even tell you where you can get one. He has a Bible, but he wants mine. And I realized the enemy will work through anybody. And no matter what I said about the word, the jealousy, the anger is unbelievable. And my own brother hollering and screaming, well, I'm a man. I should have it. Where I checked it, the same stores that would sell it to me would sell it to him. But he wanted mine. The anointing isn't in the book. The anointing's in the spirit. And a lot of us find out we got to let people go. Until God does his perfect work, until God finishes what he started. And like I said, he who increaseth in knowledge, the 
the spirit of truth. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When that spirit of truth testifies to your spirit, it starts revealing the truth of other people's spirit to you. And it's shocking. It's shocking. What's inside? Some people, yes, we do have brothers and sisters that are children of the Most High and they show themselves. You can make one encouraging word, one positive statement. You'll be shocked at how powerful that word is because everybody's not going to tell you what they're going through. They're not. But I'm not going to sit back and act like everything is all light and goodness because the purging, the dying to oneself has come. It is coming from day to day. We start recognizing there are a lot of things we have to die to in order to walk with God. We start seeing people's spirits that is shocking who it's coming from. Some is coming from our own children, our brothers and sisters, people we work with. I've had people literally seek me out. I'm sitting in my room doing what I'm doing at work. And they just follow and you, and you can feel the darkness coming off of them. You can feel it. They're trying to figure out how do I attack? How do I attack? And the spirit of the most high God, that spirit of discernment, remember the gifts of the spirit. It starts showing you things that you're like, God, I don't understand. And it's like victory to victory, glory to glory. I got to bring you up. I'm not growing you like the world would grow you. And at the same time, you have to conquer your own natural responses. You have to learn how to conquer it. Patience, fortitude, long suffering. I'm a gardener. I moved into this house. I planted a tree. Weeping willow in memory of my mother. Beautiful, beautiful garden in the backyard. The neighbor behind me that we've never had one negative word between us, ever. For three years I was growing this tree and this man poured something. He, he did something to where the tree looks like it's dying. There's not a leaf on it. It started blooming. He poured something on it. And I started to go to the law. I started to do a lot of things. And I remember talking to God going, you know, I called that garden in the back, my little garden of Eden. But even in Genesis, the devil came into the garden. The devil came into the garden. This tree grew to over 25 feet and it's only three years old. There's not a leaf on it. I don't know if he put a herbicide, what he did. And I realized, God, when you are pruning us, when you're growing us, you make us let go of things we couldn't fathom having to let go of. You open our eyes to the people around us. Never knowing this person had something in their head against you. When there was never an evil word spoken, there was nothing other than a hello. That's it. But there's a purging man of sorrow. Acquainted with grief, it grieved me. I look out there at that tree and I'm stunned. I'm stunned. I'm hoping the tree comes back. But my point is, many of us go through it with our family. Where you think everything's going along good, there's nothing wrong. You don't even know what's in the heart of this person towards you at first. And then suddenly something's revealed so shocking. And we find out we got to grow a little bit more. We got to lean a little bit closer on the most high. Because everybody does not have your best interest. And they, they see that light shining all over you. You may not see it. You may not know it. But that anointing that is on you, brothers and sisters, when you're going through these fiery trials and you don't know why this trial is so strong, I found out you get people that hate you, despise you because they can't control you. They can't be with you. They want some relationship. They don't care that you're married. They don't care. And you know it's from the enemy. You get jealousy. You know, the one thing, it's in Proverbs, jealousy is rotten to the core. Rotten. You can't eat a piece of rotten meat. No, you can't. It'll kill you. It'll make you sick. 
the spirit starts revealing things to you. And you, should, you realize that it's the pruning season, the purging, where certain people, certain thoughts, certain behaviors, certain places you used to go to, people you were around. Not only can you not be around them, you can't let them be around you. You start recognizing they come into your home and they don't mean you any good. They don't mean you any good. They hope that your marriage breaks up. If you tell them something bad going on, they joy over it. They want to hear something wrong is happening in your life. A man despised and rejected of men. I understand. Serving isn't greater than the master. And just like Yeshua had brethren that when he was moving about in his ministry, his brethren mocked him. It's in the book of John. If you are who you say you are, go show yourself. It wasn't a choice that he made. This came from God. But you got a lot of people, as you grow in the spirit, they are going to attack those demonic attacks. And they will come seemingly out of nowhere. You have people that fixate on you, just fixate. Trying to see you fall, trying to get you to slip, to say the wrong word, catch you in some evil. Although there is no evil to catch you in, but in their minds and in their perceptions, that's what they want. A man acquainted with sorrow, acquainted with grief, rejected of men. You can sit quietly. People would still do it. I thought of Joseph. I thought of Job. I mean, you have to let go of certain family members that you didn't want to. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. All glory, honor unto the Lord. A lot of people, they want esteem because, you know, I'm giving the word to God. Well, I don't feel esteemed. I don't feel esteemed, brothers and sisters. I do feel faithful to God. I realize if all others leave me behind or I have to leave them, I don't want to lose. Yeah. But we go through things. We do. We go through things because to see certain family members reveal their true face to you, to see jealousy and envy come out, and I'm talking hateful, evil, venomous, even to the point of lying to you, on you, saying all men are evil against you, just like it says in the word. Yes, there's a treasure stored up for you, but we're talking about walking through this land that we're in right now. You be encouraged because you're not alone. I've had family turn because of the fact I love God. I could sit quiet and they're waiting and they're looking for things. I had to leave them alone. Praying that God opens their eyes. But there's a fiery trial. Yes, it is. There's a purging. And this thing doesn't always feel good. No, it doesn't. You get people who want to test what you believe, test what you know. But they don't understand it's the spirit of the Most High God. It's not you. And you're following God. And there are people who despise you for it. They despise you. And that's okay. Although you can't come in my space. You'll even notice some people try to get close to you. And you instinctively know they're not trying to get close. Because they want to do well by you or want to be your friend. They're trying to get close to figure out how to take you down based on the fact that you love God and that anointing is sitting on you. And it comes out of family. It comes out of people you considered your friend. But God is moving us from glory to glory and victory to victory and there's a purging. A purging. And that purging changes the way you see things. It, it creates new bloom, new growth in the spirit. 
in your understanding that even when these things are going on, remember, God said, my ways aren't like your ways. My thoughts aren't like your thoughts. I'm quite sure when Joseph recognized what his brothers did and he didn't know the end of the matter yet. Oh, he was a man acquainted with grief, a man acquainted with sorrow, just like Yeshua. And many of us are going to find ourselves in that same position where the people you love did it. Not an enemy. Not an enemy. David talked about it. Not an enemy. Not some unknown person that came out of your own household, out of your children, out of your brothers and sisters, out of lifetime friends that you had to leave behind. Because that anointing is on you. But keep one thing in mind. What the devil means for your bad, God will use for your good. We have to learn how to die to ourselves. Not my will, Father, but thy will be done. We have to die to ourselves. When Yeshua had that crown of thorns on, when he was going to his crucifixion, those things that prick your mind, the crown of thorns, pricking your head, prickling your thoughts. When they beat him all over his back, everything that supported you is torn down. So that your only support, which is true support, is God Almighty. God Almighty and his word. Even though they didn't mean him any harm, there was a point. Even his friends in the Garden of Gethsemane left him for fear because they didn't know what he knew. There's a lot of growing, purging going on, brothers and sisters. Why? Because the servant isn't greater than the master. The servant is not greater than the master. So if people are challenging you, trying to catch you in some wrong, trying to lure you in, remember it's the purging. And when you got to walk away from certain things that you've known all your life, when your eyes are open, remember he opened our eyes of the blind. He opened the eyes of the blind. Sometimes we're blind to some of the people around us. He opens our eyes. He unstopped the ears of the deaf. What does that mean? There's certain things, be it the word of God, we couldn't hear it correctly. And sometimes we couldn't hear the true statements people were making. He made the lame to walk. Spiritually, he gives us strong legs so that we can stand. When we've done all we can do, we can stand. And when we stand, many of us, we walk in this word. We live in this word. But is it always easy? No, it's not. That purging. And that man acquainted with grief and sorrow despised. Sometimes we're shocked at the people who despise us. Shocked at it. But one thing I have to say. When discouragement came, because it does come. I was shocked at how powerful one encouraging word was to me in the middle of that storm. One encouraging word. Healing word. Brothers and sisters, you be encouraged. Serving isn't greater than a master. If he was a man acquainted with grief and sorrow, rejected some of us. We're going to be acquainted with grief and sorrows, rejected, despised of men. But we also know that the spirit of the Most High God is with us. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper, it won't work. And you wait for the Lord's timing, not your own timing. It doesn't matter, my thoughts are not like his thoughts. He'll show us and grow us, but in order to do so, many of us have to be purged. Some things that we cling to, it's time for that old branch to be cut off. 
that faded flower to be cut away so the new growth can come. And it doesn't always feel good. No, it doesn't. Because sometimes that's all we've ever known. We haven't seen the new growth to know how beautiful it'll be yet. All we know is what we had. But I also know trust in the Lord. And that's not a light statement. Sometimes we make these statements never knowing when you got to live it, when you got to walk it and talk it. It's a whole nother animal then. Those of you who are acquainted with grief, acquainted with sorrow, you're not alone. This fiery furnace, this purging, a servant isn't greater than his master. But we also know he sent his ministering angels. When Yeshua was in the garden and he felt abandoned by everybody else, his angels ministered to him. And when it was all over, it was victory, my brother and sister. It was victory. Be encouraged. You're not in that furnace alone. I'm in it with you. That purging. But let that spirit have its perfect work. You be encouraged. You be encouraged. Like Joseph, when he was in the prison, 17 years his brethren were gone from him. Set in prison for two years, but he was gone for 17 years. It has to be a powerful thing to be separated from your family that long. But some of us are going through that. A prophet is respected everywhere except by his own family. Family doesn't always have to be the people in your household. It can be sons and daughters that moved out, brothers and sisters, our mother, our father, aunts, uncles, cousins. They don't want to see God doing his work on you. But you'd be encouraged. When they speak all manner of evil against you in his name, you'd be encouraged. I had a sibling holler and scream. I don't even know who Jesus is. I don't know anything about the word, which just blew my mind. When I tried to speak good things, I got attacked. And right now, he's doing a purging. He's doing a purging because God is a revelator. He'll reveal things inside people towards you that will shock you. But anybody that loves brother, sister, mother, father, husband, wife, son, daughter more than me, isn't worthy of me. Those words are real. They are real. And when you have to live it and you're not just quoting it, you start understanding he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, rejected of men. But in the end, there is victory. And when the devil comes in like a flood, he raises up a standard against him. So if you're going through and that furnace is blazing and you're under attack, you're not alone. You are not alone, brothers and sisters. If you look around in that furnace, you might see my face because I'm in it too. But I also know the spirit of the Most High God came into that furnace. And he cools the flames of the enemy. He takes that heat and calms it. The servant isn't greater than his master. What they did to him, they will do to you. But be encouraged because he's overcome. He's had victory. And if we're like him, the victory is ours as well. Peace and blessings. Shalom.